The second stop on the Pro Bowlers Fall Tour on ESPN is here in Wichita, Kansas. 78 titles among our five finalists tonight. In the number five position, looking for his very first PBA championship. A win would qualify him for the Tournament of Champions from the Colony, Texas, Rick Lawrence. In the number four spot, he's captured 26 PBA titles. Player of the year in 1985 and 95. He won this tournament in 1993, Mike Albee. The winner of that match moves on to face our number three seed. It's been a while since he last won. 1992, from Amarillo, Texas, Mike Scroggins. In the number two position, five times voted PBA Player of the Year. 30 titles, the tour's all-time leading money winner, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And the player they're all trying to beat. He led all five rounds this week, holder of 21 titles from Jackson, New Jersey, Parker Bone III. consecutive year. The pros are in Wichita. We're inside North Rock Lanes. An outstanding field tonight. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ferguson, along with my broadcast partner, Marshall Holman. And we are ready for the opening match. Should be exciting tonight, Marsh. Well, it should be a great opening match. We've got Mike Aldi, the 26-time PBA champion Hall of Famer against first-time telecast for Rick Lawrence. So, uh, should Rick be a little bit nervous? I would think so. Advantage Aldi. Advantage early, but uh, in a one-game match, believe me, Albee's not going to take anything for granted. First shot of the match in the Brunswick Pro Source Open, Rick Lawrence. <laughs> and certainly what would look like a nervous shot as he pulls the ball to the right of his target. He leaves the four, the six, and the ten. The only goodness for Rick Lawrence right now is he... Get that out of the system early. Better to, better to open early in the game you know, than to do it late when it can really devastate you. Go for count here, and it's an um, nearly impossible split. Yeah, he'll just shoot the six to count. Picks up two, and so Rick Lawrence opens the door for Mike Alby early. And when you think of one of the all-time great players, you're looking at him right here, Mike Alby. Shot for Albee, right in the pocket, making his first telecast of 99. He's really been kind of in a dry spell. Well, he has. And for Mike Albee, we see the ball track out to about the seven board, come right back into the one-two pocket. Takes care of all the work. Opportunity to take a larger lead. He leads by 11 pins right now with a strike in a second to make it 21. And very important for Albee to put the pressure on early. I know he wants to just drive a stake in as soon as he can. One year in 1993 with that 300 game. And the very professional Mike Albee taking advantage of his opposition. Mike's been doing that for a number of years. Rick Lawrence again, first telecast. Uh, should he win? Qualify him for the Tournament of Champions later on the PBA Fall Tour here on ESPN. Rick Lawrence striking on pregnant lane 32. He came in light, his last shot on 32, and I just wonder if that might have affected his psyche when he moved over to lane 31 to start the actual game out. Well, nudge Randy Peterson. You know, the, we bowled, uh, they bowled the final eight games this morning, so he really didn't have a lot of time to think about the telecast or think about winning, but he nudged Randy Peterson by just a pin to make it on the show. Well, it was very, it, it actually wasn't quite as close as it ended up. Uh, he left a three count spare and, and got just one of them to make it by one pin. Now coming right back, making a great comeback in the third frame. You can see the power on the ball from Rick Lawrence. Drives the five pin to the right. Trust me, it's going to fall. Mike Alby started off the slowly, 22nd after the opening round, made his way up, qualified fourth. The solid seven 
for Mike Albee. Really thought he had it there. A lot of corner pin problems this week for both the right-handers and the left-handers. Mike, a big uh, Islanders fan, although not doing so well, so he told me to keep it quiet. But <laughs> maybe I'll make <laughs> Wife watching back home, Tammy. Two children, uh, CJ, Chris, and Danielle. Back to CJ's birthday. He'll be 10 tomorrow. No problem with that seven pin spare. You know, you alluded to earlier about Albee shooting 300 in the title match here in 1993. He actually needed the first strike in the 10th to win that match against David Ozio, who set 279. So. Mike certainly no stranger to lanes 31 and 32 here at North Rock Lanes. There's the score. Alvey with the early lead up in the fourth. Here comes the messenger. Goes right in front. Boy, that was a pretty shot off the hand of Mike Alvey. Now the head pin. The head pin is going to go to the sideboard. Here it goes to your right. Now coming back. Looks like it's got to touch it. Curves out of the way, leaves the seven pin in the reaction to Mike Albee. Disbelief. Albee, no problem, taking up that seven pin. So it's Mike Albee now by just 10 over Rick Lawrence. Take a look at some of the Wichita State Shockers here enjoying the competition. Well, Rick Lawrence started off slowly and opened in the first frame, but he's come roaring back. Well, he has, and he has the opportunity here in the fourth frame to tie up this match. Actually, he could take a one-pin lead. Three in a row for Rick Lawrence. Time now for Dexter's footwork of the pros. Well, here we have Rick Lawrence with very slow, small steps, which accommodate his short and soft swing. Got a very solid, very solid look at the foul line. And watch how he's perfectly perpendicular to his target. That's this week's Dexter footwork of the pros. And the lead. Boy, he doesn't look nervous right now, Phil. He took care of business after that open in the first frame. Four in a row for Rick Lawrence. Now Mike Albee trails by 11 up in the fifth frame and uh, easy style. Well, yeah, very fluid. Ball in the one-two pocket, high flush. Another stubborn seven pin for Albee. And really not much that Mike can do right now about the seventh pin, except to, you know, maybe just, as he said, to keep his speed slower. That was the, the key to the carry this week. So he's going to have to try and take care of this, make the seventh pin, and then work on keeping that speed just a little bit slower. Nine caches out of 16 events so far this year. It's really been a disappointing season for Alby. As he picks it up, his last win in the ABC Masters. And he's the only uh, player to win what they call the Super Slam, the PBA National Championship. Did that twice, the U.S. Open in 1989, the Brunswick World Tournament of Champions in 95, the Touring Players Championship, and the ABC Masters. Boy, now 26 titles in all, and trying to get himself back into this match. And another solid seven pin. He has thrown a near perfect game, just leaving uh, some seven pins here in this first match. And Rick Lawrence, after an open, if you just joined us, he has thrown four in a row to take the lead midway through this opening match. I'll be switching balls to pick up the seven pin. Very important to have the right combination in order to get the carry. 17 average this year. Another seven pin. That's four seven pins in a row for Albi. Now Lawrence, uh, a little bit bigger lead. Well, he's got a nicer four bagger. He's got four strikes.
looks wide. Ball came back to the pocket, but it wasn't that down in, down and in line shot like it had been in the previous frames. We'll take a look. Watch this ball starts hooking back into the pocket. Comes in just a little bit late. Four pin goes around the bottom of the seven pin, and he's surprised. You he thought that, he had it. You want that ball to finish a little bit more at the back end? Well, he wants to. He wants the ball to be more on line and not not really hook in hard. Picks it up, not the uh, line that Albie's playing at this point. More log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Comes right back and uh, mm, can't knock out the six. Well, he kept the trajectory a lot straighter that time, but the uh, ball was pulled off his hand, and he leaves nothing but the six pin. I watch the ball come in ever so high. Fortunate that ball a little bit higher could have been a wide open split. Lawrence averaging uh, 214 and a half this year. Going for the spare, picks it up. So right now, we got a close one going. Mike Albee trails by 11. Rick Lawrence looking for that first win. Oh, we are back, and Mike Albee stepping up now. Trails by 11. Nice to have you by from Wichita, North Rock Lanes. Boy, another great week. Well, it has been, and for Mike Albee, the best week he's had all year. His first telecast. He's left four solid seven pins in a row. We'll see if he does try and slow the speed down and let the ball hit back further into the pocket. Exactly what he did. Very good shot for Mike Albies. He makes the proper adjustment after four solid seven pins in a row. That was a pretty shot as Albee right uh, back in it. Trying to make it a double. There you see Mike Alvey, a double and four straight seven pin spares and a strike. Remember the strike here can cut that lead of Rick Lawrence down to one pin, but more importantly, we just put added pressure on Lawrence. Beautiful shot. Alvey has come right back with a double. Albies ball going over about the 16 board, going out to, let's say, six. Back into the pocket. Great shot. It's a double. The satisfaction for Mike Albee. And he's got a lot of people here rooting for him, Phil. Turned it a little bit. Able to get a strike. So Rick Lawrence, under pressure, comes up with a big clutch strike in the eighth frame. Remains one pin up. Lawrence now in the ninth frame. Strike here and he can't be shut out. Solid seven pin. And we've seen a lot of that this game, Phil. I'll tell you, we got to hand it to uh, Rick Lawrence, though, after that open in the first frame. He has just thrown every shot in the pocket. Well, he's made a lot of great shots, and this was another one, but unfortunately, as we can see the ball going down the lane, it's the, the ball is going to hit the one-two pocket, but the four is around the bottom of the seven. The best he can do is make the spare as his wife, Gail, watches, and uh, disappointed for Rick. Picks up that seven pin spare, his first televised appearance. Gail cheering a little bit. Boy, it's tough sitting in that seat. Well, it certainly is. There's <laughs> nothing she could do except just root for hubby. And uh, Lawrence sort of puts the uh, little excitement in the spare shooting. Albee working on a double up in the ninth frame. Average 241 on this TV pair this week. Seven, ten in the pocket. There really have been no good breaks for Mike Albee this game. Now we've, this has been made as this has been made a few times on on television. Watch the ball come in late. The five pin's going to go behind the ten. 
The throw hard of the 10 pin, and it's in the channel. And for Mike Albee, he's going to have to strike out and have a lot of help because the best he can do is 210. Rick Lawrence shooting at a 217 pace right now. Tough break for Albee. Pocket 710. First show of the year for Mike. Made three telecasts last year. He won uh, the ABC Masters, finished third in Akron, and fourth in the PBA National Championship. Comes right back. I'll be able to strike the first ball in the tenth. And you know, anytime you can force your opposition to show up in the tenth frame, you still got a chance. That's what Mike's got to be thinking right now. Is he? Asked tournament director Kurt von Kruger for a re-rack on lane 31. Albee approaching uh, that $2 million career earnings mark as he requested the re-rack and uh, was able to get it. So Albee now second ball in the tenth. And probably a problem within the one and the two pocket for, for Albee. That's what the lefties are looking at. Still has a chance. And I know if I'm Rick Lawrence, I just didn't see Mike Albee not strike on that shot. Yeah. So Lawrence will need a mark. There's a score. 180 through 9, a double, so that means Albee can shoot 210. And like you said earlier, Phil, with uh, basically every ball just right in the pocket. Well, it's 2-10 for Mike Albee. The question is, will it be enough? And Rick Lawrence will have to answer that question right now. Any kind of mark. Mike Albee on his fill shot. Great shot from Albee. All 10 are gone. He's done the best he could. Lawrence up in the 10th, needs a mark. His high finish, 21st before this event. Looks good. And he takes care of business. He's going to win this first match against Mike Albee. All he'll need right now is uh, four pins in uh, two shots. Four pins, two shots. What a huge win for Rick Lawrence. First televised appearance and knocks off uh, one of the kings of bowling and Mike Albee. I'm sure he's very happy he didn't leave that on his first shot, having to pick up a corner pin to win the, his first ever match. Well, you're right. He, he wanted, you know, anytime you need a mark in the 10th frame, you know, the, the best kind of mark to get is a strike. Just get it over with. Don't leave any room for any kind of an error. Lawrence did that. So Rick Lawrence converts 217 to 210. Opening match <laughs> victory. And Lawrence will take on Mike Scroggins in match two. Lawrence looking for his very first PBA championship. Scroggins has won one PBA title. We're here at North Rock Lanes in Wichita, Kansas. Boy, great to have you by, and what an exciting opening round match, 217 to 210. Mike Albee, boy, a tough match through everything in the pocket. Well, Mike Albee bowled a very, very good game, a very professional game. Started out with a couple of strikes, and then the four consecutive 10 pins got the air of the other, but uh, the double. But it was the 7-10 in the ninth frame that really hurt Albee. Well, Rick Lawrence moves on now to take on Mike Scroggins. However, a couple of heavyweights on top. Well, you're right, and, and with Rick Lawrence bowling against Mike Scroggins, they're very familiar with each other. They're both from the from the Southwest region and they've had many, many times where they bowled in regional tournaments, but the power is definitely on top. Walter Ray Williams Jr., 30-time PBA champion, the number one ranked bowler on the Pro Bowlers Tour for many, many years now. He's in the number two hole. And who's number one? Parker Bone the third. He's only having the best year of anybody on tour this year. He's got already five titles going for his sixth. Back to you, Phil. All right, thanks a lot, Marsh. So, um... Uh... Got a picture there of uh, Parker Bone taking a couple of practice shots. He's the uh, top-seeded player. And the uh, final practice shot for 
Mike Scroggins. He has won one PBA title. It's been a while, 1992. He won in Sacramento. Both these players need a victory today to qualify for the Tournament of Champions, the prestigious TFC a little bit later on on the fall tour. Lawrence will open up this second match. And coming in. A tough break for Lawrence. It came in just, just the six pin. Came in just a bit high. And no problem with the spare for Rick Lawrence. And right now, Rick Lawrence has got to be the favorite this game after the game under his belt. But Mike Scroggins has got what I call like a rubber band swing. Very, very loose and squeezed. So leaves the uh, bucket for the lefties. Take a look at Mike Scroggins' footwork. Heel toe, four steps. Real solid at the foul line. Like the way the foot is perpendicular with the foul line. Tough spare. And it's only going to be nine. Tough opening shot. Well, he left the bucket, and there's many ways to make this as there are to miss this. We'll watch he goes with the harder ball, hard and straight, just pulls a little bit, and he chops it right off the five. I mentioned just the one PBA title. Mike started off slowly, 30th after the opening round, but he has won 12 PBA regional titles, 10 in the last two years. And the soft seven on lane 31. Better shot from Scroggins. It just, you know, sometimes it just takes a little while to get into the flow of the match. Even though these guys have had an hour of practice prior to the, to the telecast and some practice shots prior to, to the match itself. You know, and these guys don't have as much television exper as experience as, say, you know, the guys coming up, the Walter Ray Williams, uh, Parker Ball, and so all this plays into the mix. It just seems that Rick Lawrence has settled down quite nicely. He opened in the first frame of match one against Mike Albee. Won that one, 217 to 210 to advance. Ooh. Rick Lawrence starting to get a little animated out there. Part-time player on tour. From an overhead look, watch the slide foot. That's picture perfect. He's back away from the foul line. Now he slides a little bit. He was about oh, five, six inches back from the foul line. That's that's all right. Actually, with the way he throws the ball, it gives the ball a little better chance to hook up to the pocket. has come out storming again here in match two after a spare. Now he throws a double and leads by 21. Lawrence throws this ball. He asked the ball to hook up to the pocket. It does. Please, reaction. Scroggins kicks him out. So after an open in the first frame, spare comes back with a strike. I mentioned about the tournament he won in Sacramento in 92. Four lefties on that show. Parker Bone the third, Mike Albee, Joe Salvemini, and, and of course uh, Scroggins and Robert Lawrence. He defeated for the championship. Four lefties on today's show. Going for his first double. Take the lead down to 11. Just a beautiful shot by Mike Scroggins. So Scroggins now with a double, and that cuts into the lead. Just an 11 pin advantage. Give you a little varying tradition. 278 high game this week for Lawrence. He is up now in the fourth. But when you hear 
when you hear Rick Lawrence say, come on, baby, he knows it's high flush in the pocket. Becoming very comfortable on lanes 31 and 32. We've seen this quite often today from Rick Lawrence. Just another flush shot. Lawrence three in a row. Pulls back home a show place lanes where he averages 243. They won't let him in the jackpots or anything. <laughs> Yeah, the string stops at three with the six pin. There's, you know, there's very, there's really nothing fancy about the way that Rick Lawrence throws the ball. Very basic, almost, almost, and I don't mean this in a derogatory sense, but almost a league, league like in watching his form. I was going to say you can bowl like that for an awful long time and probably be very good. No problem with picking up the six pin. Well, you're right, Phil. He's not putting a lot of pressure on his body the way he throws the ball. Scroggins down by 20, and he is up now in the fifth frame. The first game, uh, four games this week, 50 behind. He was 50 below that 200 mark, and so he started to watch Parker Bone, where he was playing inside, and he caught fire. And he's caught a three-bagger right there, Phil. Just 10 pins down. The strike here in the sixth frame will put him even, as Brother Mark certainly approves of that. And the only time he's going to be able to watch Parker tonight is in the title match. Ball hooks up nicely into the pockets. Seven pin, the last one to fall. And there's twin brother Mark's reaction. Scroggins just absolutely dominates the southwestern region. And when he comes out on tours with a few tournaments he bowls, he does very well out here as well. Now pressure on Lawrence. He comes in high, leaving the six and the ten. What happened on that shot? Well, it, it, it just looked as if his direction was right of his target. Ball never got far enough to the left. Fortunate, the ten pin, the seven pin falls. No, that's not, not what he was looking for. But he puts his hands together as if to say, "Thank you for not being a split." You know, there are going to be four, four lefties bowling today as Gail watches. But and that could make the lanes dry out faster on the left hand side. Walter Ray Williams Jr. will be bowling in the next match. The only right hander has the fresh condition on his side. Perhaps an advantage, Walter Ray, but we'll get to that. In the next match, Lawrence up in the seventh frame. Doesn't appear phased by the television lights tonight. Once again, fortunate to break down the split. As he came back, you could, you could see he was sort of, it was like he was looking for help. But he's looking to his ball rep, as the players are wont to do. Lawrence trying to convert the spare here in the seventh frame. We got a tight one in match two. Picks it up. No problem. We're in match two. The winner will face Walter Ray Williams Jr. No course record. Scroggins up in the seventh. Working on a four-bagger. Yeah. Well, that's the first time we've seen the half seven knocked out. Great shot from Scroggins. More pressure applied. Leads up to 14. Watch the four pin as it goes into the sideboard. It'll kick the seven pin out. Bang. Boy, that's the pro's friend. Scroggins' first championship appearance of the year. Hoy oh, loves that shot. Last year, in one television show in Albuquerque, he finished fifth. Lost to Gary Skidmore, who's uh, from that area, 278 to 222. Has finished this year 23rd. Four, six, ten, and the 14 pin lead is gone. Marshall, uh, can you make this? Well, I, I know you can. 
it's, you know, the only way to make it is to bounce it out or you get the ball to the right of the of the sixth pin and slide it over. But he's going to go for the two. You know, if it bounces out, fine. But, uh, you know, once in a blue moon, it's not going to happen. Well, working on strikes, uh, better to go for two, I would imagine. Get all the pin count you can. 174 through eight. 14 pin lead just turned into a one pin deficit. Now Lawrence has that lead. And Rick Lawrence gives himself a round of applause. <laughs> well, when you throw a good shot, why not? Lawrence, uh, we've seen Gail a few times in the stands. Four children, Kayla, Matt, Ashley, and Elena. She is 18, Elena, and uh, going to Southwestern College. So he'd like to pick up a few bucks, help at college tuition. Lawrence with a possible 245, Scroggins with a possible 234. He can keep his destiny in his own hands with a strike up in the ninth. And he does it. Frank DeSocia, the tournament chairperson. A good friend of pro bowling. He does a terrific job. This has been a sensational week. Scroggins needs to strike. Here comes the messenger. Actually, the messenger didn't need it. Four pins fell over into the seven. Looks like the, the head pin's going to go to the sideboard. Looks like it's going to come back take care of business, but uh, he didn't need that help. <laughs> I'll stare at him down. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, Lawrence isn't really paying that much attention as he moves over to the right-hand chair to get ready for his 10th frame. Playing musical chairs. He's off to the right, and Scroggins now in the 10th. strike and Marshall what's the setup here well right now for Scroggins I said earlier he can shoot 234 he's now one pin behind with a strike here he can take a nine pin lead 234 would force Lawrence to get two strikes in the 10th Scroggins he was uh, bowling back uh, back home when the Virginia Beach show was on last week the AC Delco and his son Ross who's three at that how come you're not on the show he goes wait till next week and here he is those three-year-olds can put a lot of pressure on you to perform. Boy, and really the first time that Scroggins has not been able to carry. His carry's been very good. He just hasn't, hasn't hit the pocket every time. Well, we'll see the familiar four-pin dancing around the bottom of that seven. And the reaction of his father and his brother, Mark. Well, he makes the, the seven pin. He shoots 223. There's still a very good chance of a tie. And if there's a tie, there'll be a one-shot sudden death roll-off. Lawrence right now needs nine pins on the first ball, a spare, and a strike to win by one. Any combination of 19 in the 10th frame. Pressure That's, shot. That's the right combination. Well, he's come through two games in a row. Once against the Hall of Famer, Mike Albee. And now this, this game against Mike Scroggins. And I know he's not thinking about the two guys on top just yet. Take them one at a time. But you have Walter Ray Williams, Jr., number two, and the top seed, Parker Bowen. We will have our Brunswick tip of the week. Marshall Holman coming back here in just a minute. Rick Lawrence moves on to face Walter Ray Williams, Jr. We're back here in Wichita, 245. Uh, winner, Rick Lawrence, now moves on, and he will take on one of the game's great players, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Now, here's my partner, fiery Marshall Holman, with another score more with Brunswick tip. Today's Score More with Brunswick segment brings us to the Brunswick High Performance Facilities in Muskegon, Michigan. We're here to show you Throwbot, the latest technological advancement in the world of bowling.
Brunswick's one-of-a-kind million-dollar computerized ball thrower. A throwbuck can be set up to throw the ball like any bowler by matching their speed, revolution rate, release height, loft, and amount of lift and turn. Here we set up Throwbot to throw the ball like straight shooter Walter Ray Williams Jr. Now we've changed the settings to hook the whole lane like Chris Barnes. The information from Throwbot gives the R&D staff at Brunswick a state-of-the-art way to develop new better reacting balls for all levels of bowlers. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. And more, we've got a great tournament going here, but we've got some big events coming up. The Canandaigua Open, that'll be next week. And then the Greater Detroit Open, that's at Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan, October 27th, 9.30 to 11 o'clock. Mark that down. And uh, also uh, on Wednesday, the following week, Bay City Classics. So keep in mind, uh, this is Tuesday night, but these are all Wednesday night shows on ESPN. The Bay City Classic uh, rounds off uh, our next uh, batch of three tournaments. Of course, later, later on this year, the Tournament of Champions. Coming up, non-winner Rick Lawrence will take on five-time PBA Player of the Year, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Okay, thanks, Phil. I'm here with tournament leader Parker Bone III. Now, Parker, you've been in the lead after every round. This has been your tournament. It really has, Marshall. Uh, from start to finish, everything has gone my way, so we need 12 good shots tonight, and it'll continue to be my way one more game. Well, how did it look in practice for you? I know I'm watching, I'm watching Rick, uh, Rick Lawrence, who just got things wired in. Are you going to throw a little more hook, be a little further to the left? Actually, I think I'll probably be a little further inside going around it a little bit more. That seemed to match up real good for me, so if I can figure out the right move, key is the right lane. If I can figure out the right lane, I think I'm going to be uh, the man to beat. All right, good luck, Parker. Four titles this year, going for five. Back up to you, Phil. All right, thanks a lot. Very confident, and why not? You lead the entire tournament and had a sensational year. Semifinal match, Rick Lawrence, non-winner, won a couple of matches, and now will take on Walter Ray Williams, Jr., who only has 30 PBA titles. First shot of the semifinal match. Sets it in there, so a beautiful shot. Oh, right where he left off the last match, going high flush strikes. Now he's going to take on the number one player on the tour. And an aggressive strike from Walter Ray Williams, Jr. I just want to say about Walter's game, he can play so many different uh, areas of, uh, of the way. Well, he does. You know, he... he Originally, he was more of an outside player, but he's honed his skills, and there's not one spot on the lane that he can't dominate from. And I think that first shot with that emotion he showed was really pointed towards Rick Lawrence to try and let him know that Walter's in town. That tickler seven pin didn't quite get enough of the head pin to mix the pins around, and it'll be no better than a spare. The trajectory of Walter Ray Williams out on the one board. There's the head pin going to the sideboard over the top of the seven. And the reaction from Walter Ray, he knows it wasn't his best shot. Picks up the seven pin spare. Walter Ray strikes spare. Lawrence with a strike to start the match. And Phil, if they, had it, they were bowling a 10-game match, you'd give it to Walter Ray 99% of the time. But Rizzo, it's a pretty even match right now. Minuscule amount in earnings. He's going to surpass that today. That's a double. Boy, the crowd getting behind him. Well, he sticks around long enough. The people are going to love him. You know, he's really got the line. He's comfortable on the television pair. And boy, anytime you can put a bowling ball in that spot on, on the lane in those pins, you're going to be striking a lot. Doesn't throw a very powerful shot. He relies on accuracy, and he also relies on getting his equipment set up the proper way to take advantage of the dynamic equipment that's being made today. Well, I wouldn't say Earl Anthony threw a dynamic shot, although he was so accurate. Don Carter and some of the other greats. Well, one, two, three, three strikes in a row from Rick Lawrence. 
take a look at Rick Lawrence's form. Very compact game. Hardly any backswing. Very solid at the line. Now well, Walter struck both times on lane 32. Ball a little bit left from the last shot on that lane. Ball high flush in the pocket. Ten pin falls. He's uh, at, at the foul line a little bit different. Well, Walter Walter does turn at the foul line. He's not perpendicular to the line as Rick Lawrence is, but uh, seems to work pretty well for this guy. For a double. Sets in there, just leaves the nine pin. What a phenomenal fall tour he had last year. Five first place finishes. It was the Walter Ray Williams Junior Tour. Well, he, he took what, what was a close race for player of the year last year and just ran away with it. That shot for Walter Ray. High flush in the pocket. Ball went past the nine pin as no problem picking up the spare. No problem with the spare. 60 through three, spare in the fourth, and Lawrence leads by 20 after he has started off with a... <laughs> confident, confident player. Yep. Not the six pin. Leaves the six pin. Another overhead look at Rick Lawrence. Let's see if his slide is still nice and straight at the foul line. Still looks really good. Still about six inches short of going over the line. I saw him miss a six pin earlier today, but uh, that's not going to happen right now. No problem. The diminutive Lawrence uh, with a spare in the fourth, and he leads by 19. And Gail's having a great time. Gail doesn't feel the pressure. Rick doesn't feel the pressure. When you bowled, when you first started out in your career, were you in awe of some of the great players that you competed against? I think I was too young and too dumb to even realize what I was doing. <laughs> and now you've matured. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, baby. There goes that oh, baby again, and it is just perfection. Pressure on this man, Walter Ray Williams, Jr., Walter with 30 titles, 31 second place finishes. Can't do it any better than that. Now let's take a look at the Dexter footwork of the pros. Well, we'll get that a little bit later, Phil. So Walter Ray now. Strikes bear, strikes bear, strikes. So this has been kind of a problem lane for him. Well, he came in light the first time, just a little bit high the second time. Maybe more speed, Walter. Just yeah. what you said. Uh, it looks as if he did throw the ball a little harder. He takes that deficit and turns it into just nine pins. So Walter Ray Williams Jr. is certainly in the game. We are back, and it's uh, night. Not quite Halloween. Got a bit spooky here because Rick Lawrence is doing a number. Well, and the, this next shot is the telling shot for Rick Lawrence. Walter Ray Williams Jr. just threw two strikes in a row to take that lead down to nine pins. If Rick Lawrence could answer on this shot, then you've got to like his chances to win this match. This is also the lane he just left the six pin on in the fourth frame. Shot, so a double. Wow. Rick Lawrence coming back. Show your PBA loyalty by becoming a member of the PBA Fan Club. We got a lot in attendance today. Fan Club members receive quarterly newsletters, which include the latest inside information on the PBA tours, tips and interviews with the pros, discounts on membership, $14.95 plus $3 shipping and handling. Includes a PBA decal. For more information, 1 888 440 1340. Lawrence with a double in the seventh. Solid seven pin for Lawrence, trying to take a 29 pin lead. It's down to 18, and Walter Ray Williams Jr. certainly has the opportunity that he wants right now. And Lawrence making great shots. I'm really, I'm, I'm very impressed. I've, I've, I've known Rick for many years. Uh, 
Never seen him, never seen him uh, make it to the televised finals, and here he is doing a great job. Pros don't miss a lot of spares, and he's able to pick that one up. You don't get here to the championship round by missing spares, and Lawrence comes through. But again, that Aaron shot in the first frame of match one, and after that, he has lived in the pocket. Now, this is the lane Walter Ray Williams likes the best. Hasn't missed it. Pin. Now, we're ready. Let's take a look at the Dexter footwork of the pros. Well, with Walter Ray Williams, he starts with a really large first step, and he just pushes away slightly inside his target. And steps two, three, and four are compact, which allow for a strong slide to create leverage. You see, he turns his foot at the foul line, but for Walter, a lot of perfection. And that's another Dexter footwork of the pros. Walter with a spare in the seven. Trailing by 19 pins. Both players through seven. Possible 239 for Walter Ray. Boy, reaching back for something and left just a four pin. Ball creeping up high, leaves the four pin. Boy, it looks good right here, but it just keeps, just keeps hooking. Walter is dumbfounded by the four pin standing up. And the best fair shooter on tour has no problem with the four pin, but he certainly has a problem with Rick Lawrence. There's the score, 148 through 7 for Walter Ray. Rick Lawrence now leads by 20. He is up in the eighth frame. Boy, it looks good off his hand. And is good. Boy, you know, I've watched Rick Lawrence enough tonight that, that I can see it. As soon as he lets go of the ball, you can just, you can tell if he's made a good shot or not. And he's made a lot of good shots. And he's one more. One more good shot will take him to the title match against Parker Bone III. I'm not sure if that's... Uh... Sweat, tears, but I tell you what, she has to be elated by the performance of her husband tonight. Another clutch stride to Lawrence. Big double. You heard him say sit as Gale is allowed to smile a little bit more. That ball was creeping up a little bit high, Phil. When a, when a pro says sit, sit, he wants it to stop hooking. Bringing it back, just a 10-pin. It does not look good for Walter Ray Williams Jr. right now. And almost a 7-10 split, the same same shot we saw Mike Albee leave in the first game. There's the 7, there's the 10. 7 falls out, but the stubborn 10-pin. And for Walter Ray, 31 pins down. The best he can do is 217. That means Rick Lawrence would really just have to show up in the 10th frame, stay behind the foul line. Rick Lawrence, moments away from bowling for his first PBA championship, a shot in the Tournament of Champions. Walter Ray finishing out this 10th frame, getting to 217. His wife Paige back home, uh, they're building a house, so she is busy trying to get things ready. And we thought at the start of the telecast that Walter could have the upper hand being the only right-handed bowler. Uh, but, uh, boy, Rick Lawrence is just lined in, and he's getting the, he's making great shots, and he's getting some breaks here and there where he needs them, mainly from his opposition, not striking. Yeah, Walter has caught somebody that is uh, red hot in Rick Lawrence. <laughs> well, I guess if there's some good news for you, Walter, at least it won't be your 32nd second. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Now for Rick uh, Lawrence. Let me try that. Just five pins, and he has won this semifinal match, and he will take on Parker Bone the third. Well, he hasn't won it yet. Uh, you know, he just he just needs to stay behind the line and over hardly anything. Five pins. We can give it to him, but uh, 
He still needs to do it, and uh, that should take care of things. Oh, beautiful shot. Why get five when you can get ten? <laughs> now let's bury the five-time PBA Player of the Year, Rick Lawrence. We'll meet Parker Bone in the title match, and Parker has an excellent shot at PBA Player of the Year honors. Possible 258. Easy style, and there's the result. So kids back home, you don't have to just go out and crank the ball to be successful. Especially with the uh, with the new, you know, reactive, proactive, dynamic bowling balls that are out on tour today, and for the public to buy as well. But down and in players, they can compete against the power shooters, and in some cases, as in today, beat them up. Boy, 258 to 207, and we've got the underdog, number five, going up against number one, top seed, Parker Bone the third in the championship match from Wichita. Coming up. And we're back in Wichita, North Rock Lanes. Taking a look at match one, Lawrence defeated Albee 217 to 210. Defeated Mike Scroggins by a bunch. And beat up on Walter Ray Williams Jr. 258 to 207. Boy, and Lawrence just gets better with every game. Let's take a look at some of the other finishers. Randy Peterson, you know, he had a chance to make it in the last round, but he came up one pin short. Our defending champion, Norm Duke, he ends up in ninth place. A couple of uh, Wichita State shockers, Justin Romick in 12th and Rick Steelsmith in 13th place. Brian Goebel, the defending Tournament of Champions champion, looking forward to going back to that tournament and doing it once more. Mark Williams, he'll be inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame later on this year during the TSC. So congratulations to Mark. And our big cranking Rudy Kazimakis, he wanted me to say hi to his son, Anthony. It's his 12th birthday, so happy birthday, Anthony. Oh, yeah. That's a look at the top 24. So we're ready for the uh, championship match. Number five seed, Rick Lawrence against Parker Bone, the third. And Bone is led after each round, all five rounds this week. And Lawrence trying to become the uh, first player in quite a while to win from that fifth seed. Steve Hoskins last to win from the number five spot in the Bayer Brunswick TPC in November of 97. Solid seven pin for Rick Lawrence. You know, there's some variables in, in this game as far as who I think has the best chance to win. Now, Rick Lawrence certainly has the command of the lanes. He's been on, been on them for the last oh, over an hour. But he's never won a tournament, so I think that that pressure could certainly get to him. But I still, I still like him to win. No problem with that seven pin spare. And it will be important to see how Parker starts out early in the match. If he can get out to a good start, that could very well dictate how he's going to do throughout the game. Bring it back. Oh, how about it from the Jackson Master? Parker Bowen, a big strike to start off this title match. Well, a big strike, or was that a lucky strike? Very fortunate. The ball's going to come in high, and the six pin just really very fortunate to be tripped out. He likes it. He's going to take it any way he can get it right now. He has led this tournament, as you can see, from round one all the way through match play, never out of the lead. And when you do that, Phil, you feel like it's your tournament. You deserve it. Good double to start off the title match. Putting some pressure on Rick Lawrence. He has responded before. Well, 10-pin lead for Parker Bone the third for Rick Lawrence. He'd best respond, although I'm, I'm still a little concerned with, with how that first strike of, of uh, Parker's struck on lane 32, because it was so high. Still looks 
nervous, doesn't he, Phil? Yeah, I tell you, he, <laughs> he's shaking. <laughs> he is cool. Under pressure. Now, 41-year-old Rick Lawrence from the Colony, Texas. Showing me a lot. Third frame. For the double. Six pin. Once again. So Lawrence, a spare strike. Trying to get a spare here in the third frame. Parker Bonus started off this match with a double. Yeah, and a spare. Well, we've got Rick Benoit with us. That's Walter Ray, or excuse me, Parker Bonus III's ball rep. And Rick, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mark. Okay, the first shot that uh, Parker threw on this right-hand lane came in a little bit high. He definitely has the right lane hooking earlier. That was the discussion before the match. The ball he chose is more aggressive than the other one, so they are afraid of it hooking a little bit earlier. Well, he certainly made the right adjustment. Rick, what do you, what do you think of Rick Lawrence? I mean, uh, pretty impressive. I'm pretty familiar with Rick down in the southwest region. Everybody knows this guy keeps another Walter. He's got the horseshoe. That's his reputation. But I told, I told Parker, this is all about heart and all about attitude. The first of the match doesn't mean anything. It's the last part of the match that means it. Okay, Rick. Well, let's sit back and enjoy... Parker Bone here in the fourth frame, and we'll go check back with Rick a little later in the match. Fourth frame, working on three in a row. He's got a hold. Oh, and a solid ten. But the ball was left off his hand. Ball ends up high flush, but it never gets far enough to the left-hand side. Watches the pins just jump right over that 10 pin. Wow. That's a heartbreaker. So Parker trying to uh, pick up the 10 pin. In a second of Walter Ray and Player of the Year honors last year. Wants desperately to win that prestigious award this year. He said in 1989 he set sights on Player of the Year in the 90s and this is it. Well, this is his last chance and then uh, I think he's got a pretty good stranglehold on that. Rick Lawrence working on a spare. Strike here to keep that 19-10 deficit as wife Gail looks on. Right back in the pocket and uh, spare strike, spare strike. A little approval from Mrs. Lawrence. And what, when Rick Benoit was alluding to the horseshoe, it's, it's, a, it's the way that he releases the ball you know it's a, it's kind of he's kind of got the ball in like a little bit of a u does not do a lot to it to use this double and put a little heat on our tournament leader double and Parker after starting off a three in a row of spare Bowen still leads by nine pins Lawrence just will not go away 27 up just the uh, seven pin but uh, nice shot off the hand of uh, Parker his son Parker the fourth birthday coming up Saturday it'll be 10 also, got to mention Evan. You can't uh, just say one. Now, yeah, there's the flat seven, and he he knows this ball wasn't thrown quite the way he wanted to. He's uh, going to take the spare. You know, Phil, Rick was alluding to earlier that don't worry so much about the first part of the match. The second part of the match that counts. Well, we're now officially in the second part of the match, coming into the sixth frame. There are three more second place finishes. He has just had a tremendous year earnings of uh, just about 200,000. He'll eclipse that mark with this tournament. There it is. 
No chance for anything to stand on that shot. Great shot from Parker Bone. Second half of the game, and uh, it is on, and Parker leads by eight over Rick Lawrence. We are back, North Rock Lanes in Wichita, and we have got a, a classic uh, duel here. Parker Ball leads by eight over Rick Lawrence. Well, let's take a look at a comparison of the two players. Rick Lawrence on the left, and you can see his ball goes over around the 14 board, pretty much down and in. Doesn't play a lot of hook, doesn't use a lot of revolutions to get the ball back in the pocket, but boy, what he's doing is working great. Now on the other side, Parker Bone the third, a little deeper, throwing the ball around the 17 board, also goes further to the left on the lane. Now take your pick, they both look pretty good to me. Hmm. Counts as 10, big strike in, don't forget, uh, coming up later this week, the Village's Senior Invitational, the Village's Florida, that's this Thursday, from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and then the following Thursday, October 21st, from 2 to 3, the Village's Senior Tournament of Champions, from the Villages, both those tournaments on the Deuce, ESPN2. So some exciting senior action for you the following uh, couple of Thursdays. That's for the lead, and it's getting late in the title match. Lawrence now two pins ahead of Parker Bone the third. Wow. He's showing a lot of heart and a lot of ability. Lawrence now in the seventh frame, working on three in a row. Up by two over Parker Bone. Soft seven pin for Rick Lawrence. Taking a deep breath. He is not wielded under the pressure. Four games. Not at all. And See, look at the look at the four pin. It's going to lay in the channel. Doesn't quite get back up to the seven. And the reaction, I think he half expected that. Trying to knock off that seven pin. Able to do it, no problem. Dot com for the lead. And he overhooked it. He leaves the big four. Soft. You had mentioned before a couple of shots off the hand of Parker uh, worried you just a bit. Shot well, that. he came in high the first time on this right-hand lane. Rick Benoit said earlier this lane hooks earlier. Parker saying that he was soft. He was soft off, off of his hand. What he means by that is he did not get the proper speed down the lane. So Bone opens in the seventh frame, 141 through 7. 142, excuse me. Well, he lost a couple extra pins in count when he didn't take the eight. He tried to make it. He's got a hold. Strike for Parker Bone the third. The best he can do, 232. Right now, Rick Lawrence working on a 219 pace. So, uh, boy, it's coming down to the last few frames. And Rick Lawrence really has a very, very great big opportunity for this first PBA national title. Oh! Oh my! Oh, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe the horseshoe, maybe that, maybe that horseshoe is good fortune. That's right. That's the good, that, that's what the horseshoe's all about. He's got it somewhere on him. Well, take a look at the six pin. Take a look at the eight pin. Oh, the six is gone. I don't know what knocks over the eight pin, but uh, a very happy and surprised Rick Lawrence. Lawrence, the fifth seed. Fifth seed of player hasn't won since the number 97, Steve Hoskins, in the TPC in Pittsburgh. To take it to 27 pins. Oh, he didn't like that at all. Oh, that ball looked like it was definitely right off his hand and held the pocket. I thought that ball was definitely going through the ball down by 27. So he is oh, Lawrence, excuse me, but Lawrence, Lawrence found some oil there. I didn't know it was there. A must strike. Still got a chance. Parker Bone the third, down by 17 with strikes in the 10th and the 11th. 
can actually take the lead, leaving it up to Rick Lawrence to strike the first ball in the 10th to win his first PBA title. Lawrence trying to win four matches uh, in a row, just knocked off last year's PBA Player of the Year. And probably this year's Player of the Year in Parker Ball in the third, should he win this match. Once again, his first championship, a win would qualify him for the Tournament of Champions. Parker, first shot in the 10th. Right now we're checking Parker Bones hard, as Rick Benoit was saying earlier. This is the time. One more to put all the pressure on Rick Lawrence. That first shot at least forces Lawrence to show up in the 10th frame. Parker put the big split behind him. Concentrating on the second shot in the 10th for the lead. And we've seen a lot of solid seven pins today. Quality and shot. An inopportune time for Bone not to be striking 221 with the spare. Lawrence will need a mark. Any kind of a mark. Boy, a very good game bowled by Parker. Just the one errant shot. It happened in the seventh frame. It was the 4-6-7-10. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick. We're in Kansas. Flick your heels because uh, this is your night. Any kind of a mark. The new PBA champion and Gail. What a special time for you and your husband. He needs three pins. Three pins. Cool, calm Rick Lawrence. champion Rick Lawrence from Kansas in a minute. the champion Rick Lawrence 248 to 221 over Parker Bone the third his first PBA title he is off to the TFC with me Mike Light manager of North Rock Lanes with the trophy and John Crum proprietor of North Rock Lanes with the uh, check now it is time for our Ginkova moment of concentration <sighs> And you take a look here, here it comes, off the hand of Rick Lawrence in the 10th frame, a crucial shot. Needs it to shut out Parker Bone, and he trips it up, and how about that one? So Rick Lawrence, the winner of this huge event here in Wichita. Congratulations to Rick Lawrence, the winner of the 1999 Brunswick Pro Source Open. Be sure to join us next Wednesday, October 20th in Canandaigua, New York for the Canandaigua Open at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next on ESPN is Shell's Wonderful World of Golf. For my partner, Marshall Holman, I'm Phil Ferguson. So long from Wichita. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, Go.com.